And so conveniently enough, our third strategy that we're hoping to share with you today is to think a little bit more deeply about Zoom polling. And so I'm going to launch a sample poll that you can experience as a student. And the question that will appear on your screen is, have you posed a question to a group of students or colleagues using Zoom polling before? So what I'm doing now as the host, and Brian will show you later, is I'm clicking on the polls button. And my poll, which I preloaded into this meeting, is appearing on my screen. I'm clicking launch polling. And so hopefully, Brian, can you confirm you're able to see the poll? Yep. Great. Yeah, so the poll is up. And from my view as the host, you can't see it, but I can see the responses coming in. I can see the yeses and the nos um, and the not, I'm not sure. Uh, there's a timer up in the right hand corner that is processing so I can see how much time has elapsed and I can get a sense of how many people have participated. So I know that there are 62 people in this room right now. Right now it's reporting to me that 44 have participated. So you can get a sense of who's actively at their screen and participating among your students and you can in the poor group center workshop as well. <laughs> so I'll give just a moment for anyone else who wants to lock in their vote about whether they have used poll on their own before. Great, and if you're curious for time too, I mean this took 45 seconds how long it's been up in terms of getting everyone to respond. So what I can do now is I can click end polling and again Brian can show you the controls on his end in terms of how you would see this. It pauses for a moment and then I'm given an option to share it out. So I'm going to click share results and hopefully Brian you can confirm you can now see the results. Great, yep. so now everyone can see how of our group it seems like we have about 23%, about a quarter who have used Zoom polling before, but about three quarters who have not. So it's great. So now this is your opportunity to see it from the student perspective. And uh, we had one person who wasn't sure. Um, and then when I choose, now that you've seen the poll, I can decide to stop sharing those results. So I'm going to stop the share. And that should go away from your screen. So that gives you a sense of what, how you might use a poll if you have it already prepared for your class. And so you might consider what are, when and why you would use a poll in the first place. So one thing that I can think uh, would be helpful in terms of using a poll is to assess prior knowledge. So that's exactly what I just did here, right? So I wanted to get a sense if the room already knew about polling. If I saw that the majority of you had already used polls, maybe I wouldn't spend as much time on this section. But knowing that three quarters of you haven't used polls in this capacity makes me think, you know what, let's really talk through this and spend some time on it. So a great technique you can use for your teaching as well. You could think about using a poll to pose a question or problem to be solved. I mean, think, let's say you're teaching a STEM course and you have a multiple choice question that has a true right or true wrong answer. You could pose that to the class and see how many students are following along. And so in that way, relatedly, it gives you an opportunity to check student understanding, to make sure that your students are with you, are arriving at the, at the correct answer before you move on. You can also ask a more informal question. You know, say you want an opportunity for feedback. Uh, you wanna know if students like using polls in your class. And so at the end of the class, you put out a poll and have your students answer that. You can use it as an opportunity to gain that type of anonymous feedback um, from the room. On the back end, there are ways to say whether the answers will be anonymous or not. And I would recommend, this is especially helpful for large courses. I think that's something we're hearing a lot from our instructors and in our consultations are ways to engage that room of 100 students and feel like they're all able to participate and connect. Uh, I think the polling feature of Zooms is a really nice option for that. Okay, so I will be passing this back to Brian to show us the back end of how to use that. Great, thank you. So um, similarly to the nonverbal feedback uh, function, um, polling is not something that is turned on by default uh, in your Zoom account. So you will need to, again, um, hopefully uh, everyone can see my screen, um, but just go to your, your profile page um, at yale.zoom.us and just navigate to your settings. Um, and then again, under meeting settings here and in meeting basics, um, there is just an option for polling here. Um, and so you'll just wanna toggle that on. And then as soon as you toggle that on, you'll have the ability to um, launch polls from within your session. And so I'm going to switch over to share my test meeting and show you what this looks like uh, to, to create a poll um, kind of on the fly uh, from your session. So we can see here that I have polling enabled on this account because um, I see the polling option down here. So when I click polling, um, because I have, don't have any, any questions kind of pre-created for this session, I might just have the option to add a question here. And when I click that, 
it just launches me into um, basically the web, the, the web editor for this meeting um, and then the option to add a poll here. So, um, excuse me, some slight awkwardness. I can title my poll and then put in my questions and, and you can choose whether or not you want people to, uh, to be able to choose just one answer or uh, multiple options here. So let's do a couple here. And then when I say save here, we'll see that now the poll is in my meeting and I'm ready to launch the session here. So I could launch the poll and you'll see the, the poll in progress. Um, again, as Beth mentioned, the, out of how many people have voted here, or how, out of how many people in the meeting have voted, um, and then you have the option here to, to end the poll, and then you can share the results out to, um, to the participants in the meeting. And so I do just want to go over just one more method to, to add polls into a meeting. And so let me go back to... So, and that would uh, be to, to add the polls um, to be used into a meeting before the meeting starts. Um, so again, here we're just in my, my profile page and I can just go to uh, my meetings to see all of my scheduled meetings here. Um, and so I'll just jump into the details for one of my scheduled sessions. And now we'll see all of my meeting details, um, but we'll also the bottom, um, the option for poll here. And this is where we can, and so cool, click the add button. And again, we get this same editor. And you can title. Add your options. And then when you say save here, uh, this will just be added as a poll for this particular session. And then when you're running that meeting and you go to the polling options, you can choose that question to launch, um, launch in your meeting. With that, I'll turn it back over to Beth. Thank you, Brian. And I know we had a few questions popping up in the chat window about preloading the questions. And so what Brian just showed us is exactly how I had done it. I got to the meeting settings. Uh, through the web uh, client and was able to access it that way. Let me share one more time. So a few quick considerations as you're thinking about implementing polling in your classroom. One is that only the host can make polls during the meeting. So if we're looking at the, the backside of this meeting, I'm the host of this meeting and Brian is functioning as my co-host. There are many capabilities within Zoom that your co-host, which could be a co-instructor or TF may also have, um, but there are some capabilities that only reside with the host. So that's something important to keep in mind. A second is that the visual of the polls would not be included in the recording. And so you may have noticed when we were looking at the poll, I tried to describe verbally out loud what the responses were, what the question was, what was happening. And so it's a good practice to use if you'll be recording your sessions and also just as someone who's joining you by audio only so that they're able to fully engage as well, even if they can't answer the question. <laughs> 